Here is my new best time at Carol at Rally Catalonia. Fourth place. I increased or I decreased my time by about five seconds approximately. Onto the replay. Oh, this is with a new gearing. Everything is the same, the suspension, differentials, and everything else is the same as before on my tarmac settings. The only difference is the gearing with a new limited update. And it took about five or six attempts, but I wasn't redoing the intro every time I had to restart the, the uh, stage. So it was a lot easier on my brain. That's why I record the replays instead of the live drives. Also, I tried to um, restart the stage every time there was a battery glitch where it would constantly charge. So I wanted to make sure that the stage was legit um, so that there's no constant battery recharge on the long straights. So it took a little bit more than five attempts, but five actual, five or six anyway, actual attempts at the stage. So a feature of really long stages or long racetracks like the Nürburgring Nordschleife is that because the track is so long and there are so many corners, there are a lot of places to gain time. And so if you do one lap or one stint of a stage, you can probably gain upwards of 10 seconds to, if you're, if you're already optimized, probably around five seconds or four seconds or, a lot of time essentially per corner because if a tenth here and a tenth there adds up every corner and since there's a lot of corners like I said it adds up so you can gain a lot of time by optimizing long stages or long circuits like the Nordschleife Just by listening to how many applications of the throttle there are per corner, there's still a lot of time to be gained by optimizing throttle points in every corner. So if you're driving a circuit with maybe 10 to 9 corners or so, it's easier to figure out the precise brake and throttle points because you drive the same lap over and over again. And so there's usually one brake input per corner and one throttle input per corner. 
and also one steering input per corner. That's if the lap is perfect, right? So you're not sawing at the steering wheel through the corner. You're not dabbing the brake uh, on the entry, like lifting off the brake and reapplying the brake on the entry. And you're not uh, blipping a throttle through the corner on a shorter circuit. So it's usually faster to do to have a precise um, pre precise application of all the inputs per corner. So in these tight corners, I'm basically steering to maximum steering lock to that last section that we just went through before this corner. And my current steering setting, which I'm not going to show, it's uh, at 400 degrees instead of 480 or 540. And so I'm, imagine having a 540 degree steering lock and then having to steer to maximum lock. Um, I have paddle shifts and I don't have a six shifter. And so I need to keep my hands near the sh paddle shifters to make it through the stage quickly. And so having a shorter range on the steering input makes it easier to get through the gears because I don't, I don't have to take my hands off the wheel. Now the exterior car view.
For some reason there's a throttle limitation here, or a speed limit in this sector where the car won't accelerate. It's almost like a pit limiter speed, or pit speed limiter in that uh, concrete section down that hill. Which is noticeable if you rewatch the in car view with the uh, RPM and gear shift display. So what I notice about the high-speed sections, which I've mo mentioned about before in previous videos, is the high slip angle, which you can see here, just how much the car is sliding, or looks like it's sliding in a four-wheel drift, like that right there, is that as aerodynamic load increases, the load on the tire increases, it should be obvious, but as the load in the tire increases, the grip increases, which also should be obvious. But the thing about when grip increases is that at every point in the slip curve, there is more grip. So instead of, instead of cornering at X G-force at one degree of slip angle, you're now cornering at Y G-force at one degree of slip angle which is why it being greater than X possibly, or should be at higher speeds. And so these high slip angle slides, at high speed anyway, this is not, it doesn't feel right. It's very spectacular, spectacular to watch. Like right there is this high slip angle through this high speed section, but it's not accurate. So basically at higher speeds with downforce, there should be less slip angle or to achieve the same or greater G-forces. And that's the same with having a hard compound tire versus a soft compound tire. A lower grip tire, you have to turn the wheel more to achieve the same G-force or even less G-force than with a grippier tire, a softer grippier tire. So let's say you'd uh, achieve maximum grip at maybe five to eight degrees of slip with a, was it a all season street tire maybe? Well, to achieve the same G-force um, or even greater G-forces with a summer tire or a, uh, barely street legal street tire, um, it would achieve the same G-force at around two to four degrees instead of five to eight degrees of slip. Which uh, these uh, rally cars are on a street tire, but they're probably, I mean, they're a rally street tire, so they're not like time attack tires. They're more um, robust, harder, I wouldn't say harder compound, but uh, thicker carcass. But they're still really good tires. They're not run of the mill all season tires, right? And the car is going very fast. 
and it, you know the, you need the good settings on the car but that's all achieved by the capacity the grip capacity of the tire and there's a lot of grip on these tires that's what I'm trying to say and so if there's a lot of grip it should achieve that maximum grip at a lower slip angle because at every point in the steering you're pulling more G so you turn the, the steering wheel one one degree um, you should be pulling more G than a harder compound tire at one degree of slip angle and that's kind of the, the reason why I have such high sensitivity setting and not only the maximum steering limit but the high sensitivity setting it is a band-aid or a patch a quick fix to having the weird steering characteristics of these high slip angle tires look how much sliding is happening at those high speeds so these slow speed corners it makes sense because there's not as much downforce but when I'm going really fast at third and fourth gear, close to 60 to 100 miles an hour, there should be a decent downforce at those speeds. So just the way the car looks right here, like that and this, you can't really see it because of the camera angle. But anyway, let's get on to the settings. Fourth place. I don't know if that's an improvement. I think I'm back to where I was. I don't remember where I was in the previous video. Anyway, let's get on the settings and move on from that. Okay, so car setup. My T102 setting. So as you can see, I have my previous settings. These are just changing the final gear on the transmission. Everything else is the same. T102, I'll, I'll show the T1 setting. It's just the transmission. These are the old transmission settings. And the new Tarmac transmission settings. All right, I'm gonna go through the rest of those settings. Suspension front, rear, differential front, center, rear, brakes, and transmission. So just like with the gravel and the snow settings, I'm just readjusting all the transmission settings so it works at this specific gear ratio. And the reason why um, the gear spacing doesn't transfer over um, for this gear ratio is because the um, the final drive ratio affects the um, the highest gears the most. So if you had a one to one ratio here, or less than one to one, so an overdrive gear, um, the final drive, any change in the final drive really affects that gear. Whereas it, because this gear ratio is shorter, it has more range, more RPM range that it is. Um, applying its torque the gear ratio does affect first gear and second gear and third gear and so on but not as much to the rpm range and the top and the speed range i don't know exactly the the right explanation to explain that aspect of um, gear reduction and gear multiplication but that's what it does that's what the final gear ratio does when you adjust it so at, at uh, back on the old settings at 5.5 I could run a different gear spacing from first through fourth than at 4.5 is what I'm trying to say anyway that concludes the video till the next one whoops <laughs>